Legends Day is upon us at Tarapa, and a legend to my left as well, Dan the Rack Man. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Yeah, just coming off the back of a bit of sickness, but I'm um, starting to feel good today, so uh, ready to roll. Sea bomb or not? Uh, no idea. Okay. Okay. No testing. Well, it's testing times in here because we haven't got Matt Daddy again. He's still feeding the baby. Max, I believe. I think that's the name. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting stuff. So no Matt in the studio, just Dan and Luke with you here to rip through what will be a big weekend of racing this weekend. Shit, it is nice to see some quality fields down there at Tarapa. I'm getting a little bit itchy, mate. I'm tempted to head down there. Oh, mate, yeah, it'll be so good. Um, and it's so good to see such good weather as well. We, we, you know, good It's track. almost certainly going to be a good track. Yeah, how good. All right, well, to kick us off this week, let us know in the comments. Keen to know what your most legendary collect on the punt is. I'll give you a little bit of time to have a think, mate, but I was almost going to go with um, sickest beat story as a question this week, but I think we'll go legendary collect. So let us know in the comments what your legendary collect on the punt is. I feel like you're itchy. You've got one already. Well, I was just thinking about a couple of things. So the uh, the, the miss was uh, Wish I Win. Um, it had that multi. Um, it was over 10 grand, I think, um, on I Wish I Win to Win the Everest uh, this year. So that was probably my sickest beat been stuck on the fence here and not getting a run and um so that was pretty tough but i don't actually have a personal story but i have a story from my dad and i think this was back in might have been 2008 2009 and he was down at the kaikura cup i think it was like in, in that first sort of week of um uh, of november and he went to go put a bet or a trifecta or a first four i think it was a trifecta actually on um on a horse called norea franco in the kaikura cup and for whatever reason, the, the the person at the tote machine made a mistake and put a bet on the Melbourne Cup, and it was like a fifty dollar trifecta or something. And he looked at it and he goes, "Oh, this is a mistake. This is for the Melbourne Cup." And he goes, "Oh, you know what? I'll just keep it and put it in his pocket, and then put the bet on the race anyway." Um, and it ended up being the year I think Viewed won the oh. Melbourne Cup, paying forty one dollars, and he got it, got the trifecta. It was twenty six grand or something. I think he won. Wow! So it was his biggest collect was uh, was from a mistake. I want one of those Happy mistakes. Yes, so do I. Who else has got one of those stories? Let us know in the comments. I did see there was a bloke sent in a photo. I don't know if I can find it, but it was a multi from over the weekend. It was, I think it was returned $71,000. It was a decent-sized multi. I don't know if it was theirs or not, um, but they just sent it. And I said, well, well done. They're like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't be messaging in with uh, 70 yeah, seventy thousand dollar collect. I'll be up to all sorts. But speaking of near on collects, um, how about this for a multi? This is actually really good. So Logan sends it in. Terra Preta to win three dollars. You beauty tick. Contribute top four. The rack man two dollars forty. Shout out to Seal Butler for the first win at black type level for the twenty two year old can ride. Uh, Number third, oh, the third leg, Verismo, Ted's top mm -hmm. four. We've been talking about the top four Maldives, haven't we? And then Midtown Boss, top three. Did that run top three? I actually didn't watch that I race. I think it runs second. Surely. Dollar thirty five that was. And then finishing on Jimmy Star to win at two dollars forty, a twenty seven dollar multi on the best bets from last weekend. Returns thirteen hundred and ninety eight dollars and twenty eight cents. Wow. How, not, how good. That's not bad, eh? Anyone else do the multi? We should just check if uh, Midtown Boss definitely run in the top three. Surely. Yeah, so that, that was in the second last at Corfu, Yeah, race nine. It? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it did uh, because it was a hot favourite. Um, Caulfield, and it was the second last. Well, um, being greedy like me, I had it to win, <clears> and I streamed it late, and I just saw the, it, they were going past the post, the result, and it wasn't it winning. I was like, fuck this, and took yeah, it off. second. Oh, 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 wow. Shout out to that bloke who got the multi home. That's a Logan. pretty... Yeah, $27 spend for 1400 bucks. <laughs> How good. Well, hopefully we can do it all again this weekend because we've got some best bets lined up for you later on. Keen to hear what your best bets are this weekend as well. Anything catch your eye over the weekend, Mr. Rackman? Uh, no, no. I just hope that I uh, contributed to your bank balance on that one. 10 bucks into... I think I seen it fixed price around four eighty or something, so it took some cash. Yeah. Um, when you tipped it originally, was it eleven dollars? It was, was it ten dollars. I think. Far out. Yeah. 
Yeah, not yeah. So it spanked, didn't it? Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a good win, and it was nice to um, nice to see and a nice confidence builder after um, getting the getting the multi home the week earlier. It was uh, yes, yeah, nice. So we're building. Yeah, you're two from two. Oh, well, two in a row, aren't you? Two in a row. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll find out what the rack man's got in store for dollar, Legends. Dollar twenty shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> crickety. Nice one. Yeah. Good. Just, just scrolling down to have a little look. Jog my memory. <laughs> crickety top ten. Yeah. What was on on the weekend for you, mate? Um, oh, I was actually pretty crook. Um, for for the weekend, so it was a very quiet, um, quiet weekend for me. So I didn't, yeah. didn't get up to much, just watch the racing and um, spent spent time with the family. Well, I was over in the Gold Coast, mate, fighting fit, trying to relax after the KM. I was actually at the airport, landed over there in Australia. Hey, you're Luke, aren't you? I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> you're the guy that lost all the cash last weekend. <laughs> uh, fuck, here we. I was trying to escape this, but now nah, it's so good to see over there eight dollar Coronas. Unreal. Still on, eight bucks on the beer. Gold Coast. Yeah, how's that possible? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but went to the surf club in the Gold Coast there for a few bits on the Saturday, then again on the Tuesday, and even on the Sunday. <laughs> yeah, on the grass harness, far out. Stop, like that's just crook. There were about three tips from the scam man. Backed every one of those. None of them run top four. And then a couple more that I got thrown. I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm going to keep going here. <laughs> Go to the grass harness and nothing. But yeah, eight bucks. Eight bucks for a drink. And the Aussies just love, like, love a punte. The place on Saturday, the small surf club, is just hissing with people at the races. Couldn't have timed it any worse. Over there on the Gold Coast for five days, no racing on at the GC, which is unfortunate. But anyway, mm. got to watch a few of the uh, best bets roll in for... The crew back home, and then of course uh, the blessed bet in the last as well. With Jimmy Star was two dollars forty and a dollar eighty by the time they went round. One thing I forgot to mention last week, mate, was the turnover and the increase in turnover on the Karaka Million from last year to this year. So a sixty-six percent increase. And I was having a bit of a think about the contribution from the Punters Club, but then also you think the people that were in the room. And then you go a bit wider to the community and then the number of people that might have had a bet on the futures around cool and fast. And I reckon roughly we're probably, as a group, BGP, responsible for one in every $4 bet on Karaka Million Night. That's outrageous, <laughs> eh? That's pretty nuts, eh? Yeah, it is. To think, you know, 2017, Ben and I rolled into Ellerslie and we're like, hey, we want to do a putters club bar here. Uh, yeah, okie dokie. Um, <laughs> go in that corner and get out of the way and, and fill your boots. And to see what it is now, to think that potentially, I, it, it might even be higher than that, but um, you know the activity that we're doing in the Punders Club and stuff and the people in the room and people betting on futures and having a bet on the night and even following the bets is, is potentially one in four or even maybe even one in three dollars is, is a fair bit of coin. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I, I, I was speaking to one of my mates actually on, on the drive in here. So he, he the first... BGP or horse racing event that he came to was uh, the Everest Day, and um, the 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 one at um, Ellerslie was like a sort of first live at the races event, and he brought a few of his mates and um, the wives came along as well. They, they just had the best time. They just yeah. said like it was unbelievable. Like they cannot wait to come back to the next one. Wicked. Um, yeah. Did you? Uh, I saw some photos floating around from Karaka Millions evening and going through. And the night goes so fast for me. I'm like, oh, were they in our room? Shit, didn't even get a chance to say hi to them. I'm like, fuck, didn't realise he was in there. I'm like, oh, you know, feeling so bad because we go through these different people and be like, oh, shit, I didn't even, didn't even get round. <laughs> well, he oh. said to me, he said, he's like, man, you were all over the show. He goes, like, at one point, I seen you at the after party afterwards, and you're like, oh yeah, I'll come and get you. We're gonna have some beers after this, and then they just didn't hear from me or see me again <laughs> after that. I was just, I was yeah. just off. Yeah, yeah, it was a full on day. Looking forward to doing it all again at some stage. Speaking of doing it all again, maybe not as big as the Karaka Million, but thinking about getting a few people together for the Derby, the Derby here on March the 2nd, I believe. So if you'd be keen to come along to Ellerslie, it's going to be the return to Auckland Cup Week. I can't go to the Cup because I've got a wedding, so I'm going to sneak a Derby in, a Derby in. If you'd be keen, let us know in the comments and we can start putting the wheels in motion to get along to the Big E and watch some good racing there. I think you've probably, you've got the winner of the derby already, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Just one? Just one? Yeah. Perfect. Is it still 21s? Uh, I actually haven't looked again. I think it was 26s or well. it might have come into 21s. Um, yeah, but I've got, got futures bet on it. Good man. And then for the harness lovers as well, and those people down there in the Cambridge or Matamata area, mm -hmm. a little bit of grinning action going on on April the 14th, maybe? 
Yeah, yeah, hopefully. So the wheels are in motion there as well. So I think um, the consensus is I think we're definitely going to do something down there and we're going to have a, an event down there. Yep. Um, just, a, you know, a few other things to iron out to see whether or not we can um, we can do a little bit more to that. But, um, yeah, I think that more details are going to come out over the next couple of weeks and we'll try and get some tickets sold and um, get a party atmosphere going on down there. It's actually really exciting. So, um, like, over just even over the last week, there's been um, quite, a, uh, quite a few horses... Um, taking slots in the tab trot race as well. So there's actually a French um, imported trotter um, that just won the Great Southern Star over the weekend. And I've gone blank, I can't remember its name, but it just beat Just Believe, which had won like eight or ten races in a row or something. Both of them yeah. have been taken in slots. Quinn Lighter's got a slot. I, um, watched, I bet Quinn Lighter on the weekend. What's going on with that horse? Uh, it, well, There's I mean, it had been racing fillies and mares for quite a while for a lot uh. of its trot races, and now it's like up against the... Yeah. The big guns. I backed it at dollar thirty one start, got plenty, and then I backed it at about thirty ones on Saturday and thought, Oh, it must be overs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, nice. yeah, it was all over pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Well it's building nicely for so there's a there's two slot races on the race by grins evening, right? The yeah, race yeah. by grins, now the tab trot. Trot slot, yeah, yeah. Trot slot. Right. Is are all the slots for the trot sold? Um, yeah, I think that they're all sold. Yeah, I don't think they have as many slots as they do for the pacing one, but it's going to be an awesome race. Like, yeah. we're going to see the clash of, like, all the best trotters that we haven't seen for ages because all the best Kiwi trotters, like, oh, a bolt for brilliance did go over for the Interdoms but then got injured, so I didn't really get to see its best. Muscle Mountain has yet to go to Australia, and Oscar Bonavina has just yet to go to Australia as well. So, basically, the clash of all these form lines. Uh, and then yeah. those those three horses that I named, Quinn Leiter, the, the French one that I can't remember the name yeah. of. Call me, uh, yeah, some, something. Um, and then Bonjour. Just Believe, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so so just even those alone, it, it, it's going to be epic. Well, speaking of harness, Fitzy comes on here uh, last Thursday and is just confident as about these four runners rattling them off at Eddington. I'm like, slow down, mate. I'm trying to put them all into a multi. Yeah, it's a bit strange. I looked 24 hours later and didn't have any cash in my account. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there? Oh, well, it It happens. Uh, okay, well, that's sounding bloody exciting, mate. Hopefully, yeah, we can get a crew together for that as well. Uh, shout out to the owners of Line of Law as well before we continue and to get into some <laughs> racing. <laughs> because I don't even watch the race. That's that's how I just can't cop it at the moment. <laughs> and funny Matty D was here to have a chat to you about you owning horses. Oh, so I didn't even watch, and then I got a message in a in a group chat saying, "Ah, oh, fucking fourth! It was a massive run." I'm like, "Oh, what happened? I didn't watch it." And that was as far as it went. And then I got a message a little while later, and it was like, uh, "Have you seen the start?" And it was a photo of every other gate opening. I was like, "Oh, this is Trentham all over again." Is it, why are you sending me photos of Trentham? Um, <laughs> is that Habana in there? No. And line of law, the only horse whose gate didn't open, and then. It pushes the gates open and then just rattles home for fourth. And this is how sick I am for the punt. I, was, I knew, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. There's nothing you can do because as soon as you run into the resulted spaces, I don't even know how I knew this, but from years ago, that it has to be considered a runner. And that's what I remembered. And I thought, well, that surely that's still the go. And yeah, sure enough. So I think a lot of people were outraged that um, the horse isn't late scratched. And I think apparently even... The jockey copped a bit of abuse about, you know, why didn't you pull it up, uh, which is pretty unfair on the jock. And obviously they they get in trouble for doing that as well. But, yeah, Bjorn uh, sent out this audio the next day, and it's like two and a half minutes long or something. He's like, the most talked about horse in Australia <laughs> in punters' forums and all this sort of stuff. But true to, true to our luck, it was sort of D-Day for Line of Law, but now she's stiffened up a little bit after the run as well. So she's going to have to go out to the paddock. <laughs> And then come back in, bit of pre-training, bit of training, and then go back to the races again to see, can she can she win one to, race? Does she deserve to be racing and going around in the BGP silks? But shit, not much luck for the ownership uh, group of Line of Law there and the the BGP horses in general. But hey, um, you can't win a Karaka Million or a Group One by not having a share in a horse. So we go again. Right before we get into this week, mate. Anything that you spotted over the weekend that you uh, were impressed by? That two-year-old was pretty good down there at Taranaki? Captured by love again. Yeah, pretty impressive again. Sure. Um, I think it got out to $1.50. Mm. The, um, the one that I did like, and I thought it had a huge run considering the draw, was um, Chantilly Lace. 
Yes. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be going to the Oaks, but um, if it cops a good track and a decent draw, like it looked like it, it found the line really well over 1,800 and it looks like the distance is going to be no issue. Um, it's been kind of great races. Yeah, I thought it was going to win, actually. I thought it actually was going to win. And, yeah, Chrissy, when she was here a couple of pods ago, was saying to us before the pod about, you know, wait till she gets on a good track with a good draw and it all goes her way. And it was pretty um, pretty sloppy down there on Saturday, wasn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think watch watch out, eh? Trentham, um, they can sort that track out and get a good track for the for the Oaks, I think. I don't know what the price is, but um, yeah, might be might be worth a little future spec. I backed one of the last there at Taranaki, um, Al Jamala, I think it was, and it was favourite for a race at Trentham. I think it won two starts ago. We went to Trentham, and I reckon we could just put a line through that day at Trentham, and did sort of nothing, and ended up got it at seven bucks over there in Aussie, I think, and he might might have won the last at about fives. But um, it's just been there's been some like really tricky form lines going through some of these races where. You then go and have a look at who's won and then go, okay, well, you can sort of see how you could have made a case um, for them winning. So, yeah, it's not easy at the moment. <clears throat> that that Trentham, what I what what I found, and that's actually how I found Contribute, because some of the horses that done really well on bad parts of that track there, I sort of have identified and gone, shit, that's actually gone really well, considering it was in the bad part of the track on a shitty track in Trentham. And so you can almost go, okay, well, I'll give that, give that a, a tick mark because I think that's working really well. Um, yep. But then you can equally, like if a horse doesn't handle it, you can equal, equally just say, okay, cool, I'll write it off. Like. Yeah. Yeah, well, one of those later on will be Habana that I'm sure we'll <laughs> talk about because Habana out the back, I thought it might have been off to the paddock, but I see it's back in this weekend and dropping back in distance. Uh, Snazzy Tavi, pretty good down there at Tahir and Ikau. Shit, two bucks a place was a gift, but uh, of course I backed it to win. <laughs> so I, did, I didn't actually see the race, yeah. I just seen the result. Oh, she just like missed the kick a little bit and then was sort of hunted up and then went round them, covered a bit more ground and uh, town crier had me crying into me bloody cornflakes. It was just perfect trip and down on the rail, did less work. And Snazzy Tavi was probably half a length off them, um, if that. And there was a good run from Magnifique. I think oh, it, Magnifique, yeah. Yeah, yeah Magnifique. I think yeah. we've backed that before. Yeah. <laughs> taking Fourth. some catch in mind. <laughs> Yeah, and that was a that was booming home, but Snazzy was pretty good, two bucks. I, I can't wait to see that horse uh, up over a bit further ground. So I, I assume that's what's what's going to happen, but we'll see. And the uh, oh, we've got a little Sharrock special. I'm not sure we're supposed to talk about this one, but oh, someone's just said that apparently we've got no sound on the podcast. Hope not, because we're 20 minutes <laughs> oh, no. in. That's uh, that's Ted. But there are a number of comments coming through. I don't know. Uh, people can hear us. Can you hear us? Let us know. You might be on mute there, Ted. Yeah. Anyway, what do we got here? Uh, message. Al Sharrick should be winning race five and race nine at Wanganui tomorrow. It's a $7 multi. So there you go. Tomorrow, race five and race nine. Yeah. Didn't hear it from me. Bit of, <clears throat> bit of stable oil there. Oh, yep. Ted says all good. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Ted. It's good, mate. <laughs> uh, happy. Yeah, just multitasking over here. So, so the, bridal train. What's that? Bridal train in race five. Train, well, I assume. Yeah, train, yeah. bridal train. Uh, oh, bridal train, sorry. Yeah, I thought you yeah. said ride or train. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I hope he's not riding them. <laughs> but you never know. Uh, Craig, Craig pay the bills, grills. Um, and was it race seven, was it? Uh, race nine. Race nine. What do we got going on in race nine for the, the sheep? The punters. Um, were you sure it was race nine? Thought it was, maybe not. Okay. Classic. Yeah, oh, yeah, Lock and Aura. Oh, Lock and oh, Aura. We love that horse. Oh, there we go. Good horse. Your favorite. Yeah, okay. 280 into 230. So hopefully that tops us up. And then one to top us up on Saturday, the BGP Blessed Bet. We're going Mark Twain top three. So that's in race number five, meeting two, race number five at $2.20, I believe, out from $1.90. And they said to me, does that look right? Uh, when they sent me the image that we usually put up on social media, and I said, no, it should be $2.50. Nice try, they said. They're not giving us two dollars fifty. So happy days. We're getting uh, two dollars twenty to run top three, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that horse, Mark Twain, as we get going. But let's get stuck into this weekend's racing down there at Tarapa. The races to cover will go through the Ka David and Karen Ellis Phillies Classic, the Herbie Dyke Stakes, and the BCD Group 
sprint with some absolute weapons of horse flesh in these. So, Dan, you can kick us off, mate. Why don't we get stuck into race number four, I think it is, which is a bonus back race, and the first six races, I believe, are bonus back races. So two-thirds of the card is a bonus back. Race number four, David and Karen Ellis, Phillies Classic at Group 2 level. Dan, where is the money going? Um, I... I I looked through this and I tried to find something to beat Molly Bloom and I don't think I can find anything. <clears throat> and I think the three dollars sixty that they gave at the start of the week was a gift. Um drawn six. I don't see it getting too far back in this. Um yeah, I, I, I just I think three three dollars well it's three dollars thirty now. I still think that that's probably overs. I think it'll probably start around two fifty. Yeah. Um I think there'll be a fair amount of money that'll come for this one. Um, the other one that I do like, and um, this is one that you tipped out a, a while ago, still bang on. I think that's not gone a bad race. It's still mm. been going really well. $4.50 for top three. Um, the way that it ran home. Did it run home for second at Pukekohe, I think? Yep. Um, Behind about time. And it actually got backed into near on favorite. It was 4.6 by the time it jumped. Yeah, so 4.5 for top three. Top four, you're getting, what, $3, I think. That's pretty good money as well. Yeah, I like that horse. The only issue, mate, I hear it might just... Uh, I heard the trainer say that Livid Sky might be a little bit fitter than okay. still bang on. So just be cautious there. You might want to go top four if you are going to have a play just to cover yourself. But yeah, really like still bang on. Backed it to to win the old Oaks. Um, can it? Don't know. We'll find out. But good track as well. That'll put the punters off. I'd imagine it, it may drift out, so I don't think there'll be a lot of money for that horse. So you might get a better price as the money starts coming for some of those other runners like Molly Bloom and the fancied runners. But yeah, I was a bit the same as you, mate. I opened this market and I thought, $3.60. I was like, wow, what else is in this field? And then you know, Mary Shan's becoming a bit tricky to, to follow. She's good, but then she can't seem to win. She's won one from seven. And, but she's very, very consistent, and you just think, can she turn the tables? But I, I think that race for Molly Bloom at Ellerslie, Karaka Millions night, you know, backed into $2.40. The money was certainly on, but I'm willing to, to forgive, and I think we go back left-handed, good track, and we'll see you know that big, straight Molly Bloom booming home. So, yeah, I'll put that on top as well. The, the horse that I am keen to see how it goes and again a little bit like still bang on only won one race but one from 10 is Tulsi but this thing every start just screams at you well don't give up on me yeah, next have, time, have next another time. go yeah and I think you're getting four dollars uh, fourteen dollars and, and four dollars to find out and I think up to two thousand meters I'm yeah very interested to see how it gets gets through um through the race but it's a pretty deep feel when you start having a bit of a look because you've got that Sabina in there as well, that won very, very well at Trentham last start, um, getting up over a bit of ground and just did it for fun. Looks like it'll get the 2,000 metres. Roger James and uh, Robbie Wellwood know what they're doing. About time was very good. Then everyone seems to have given up on Grail Seeker because we've done our ass too many times on Grail Seeker with a, a third and a second. But the way I'm going to play it, I'm going to go Molly Bloom and hope for a little bit of something of Tulsi I wouldn't be surprised if Mary Shan runs a, a very good race in there as well. So I'll probably end up in a power play down the bottom. But I think like you, I'll probably just get caught up in the Molly Bloom hype and go, right, that's my bet for this race and watch it. If I get it right, happy days. If not, is what it is. 100%. Easy as that. Let us know what you are backing in the David and Karen Ellis Phillies Classic over Group 2 level. Remember, bonus back race as well. So if you back your horse to win, if it runs top four, you're going to get something back. So it's a pretty good um, race to be doing something like well, to have a bit like that and given the, the depth of that. We turn the page into race number six, which is the Herbie Dyke Stakes. <sighs> I've got PTSD, mate. I don't know if I can say the name. But there's a, a very short favourite in here, drawn barrier one. Can it win? No. Whoa. No, no, it can. It can. Okay. It can. Am I going to back it? Am I going to like take a dollar seventy five to find out if it can get out of, you know... <laughs> the position that it shouldn't be in? No. No yeah. way. I just can't. You're done. I'm 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 done. But not only for that reason as well, I just I think um I'm all in on Campionessa here. Ooh. Um I think that, that track, I'm gonna forget about it, that last start. Um, you know, those 
three wins before on those good tracks. She just loves a good track. Um, Six dollars fifty and two dollars twenty, um, up to the two thousand meters. Um, yeah, loves That's, loves Tarapa as well. Absolutely loves Tarapa. Yeah. Um, three, four, five, seven, seven starts at Tarapa. Top four every start. Mm-hmm. My word, what are you getting top four? Dollar fifty five. Okay, but six fifty and two dollars twenty for me. Like I just think um, that I I can't see it finishing out of the top three. I think Opie's going to give it a peach of a ride. It, it'll um, it'll be leading in the straight at some point. Whether or not Legato can get over the top and beat it, I'm happy to take the two dollars twenty. You know, as a saver to find out. But I just I can't see this horse um, finishing out of the top three. Now the other one, when I went back and looked through the Karaka Million Nights races as well. This horse, Arby, over 1,600 metres, came from dead last um, oh. and ran fifth and um, ran past Sharp and Smart. Um, and so from last as well, you know, and Sharp and Smart was a lot closer than it is. Um, based on those runs alone, I can't see why one's paying 31s and one's paying 8s, apart from obviously the fact that Sharp and Smart is... There's multiple group one winner and one millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, but if we're just looking on, you know, recent form, that Arby's run was huge. And I think the $31 and $3.60 for top four, I think is worth like a little spruik, you know, maybe 10 bucks on the win and 10 bucks top four and just see if you find out. Fuck around and find out, as they say in the uh, United States of America. Yeah, I think you might have sold me into uh, Campion S. I didn't realize it was $6.50. I mm-hmm. wonder what that Quinell is paying. wonder what... Um both of them top four. Oh, it's got me intrigued, man. I'm going to have to do some study post this. The the horse I'm keen to see how it goes, a couple of them, Skyman, just over from Australia and up over a bit more ground now. Uh, you've even got no compromise in there too, that Australian type form. And I think you can put a line through that last start at Trentham and just forgive because it was pretty good at Pukekohe when it got beat by Campionessa. And you, if you watch that race, they both just like, no compromise goes to beat it, and Campionis is just like, whoa, sorry, back off. Like, that, that, that is not happening, mate. Get out of here. So one win from eight starts uh, over the 2,000 metres is probably the knock on no compromise. But a horse like Aquacade as well, you know, it seems to be uh, a little bit forgotten about now. It was, it was all the rage and all the hype for a bit there, but I'd imagine it might be heading towards the Auckland Cup, and this might be getting some Ks under feet, a little bit freshened up, goes pretty good second up. So do we wait and see for that horse because it hasn't raced since Boxing Day um, in that same race, I think. So a little while between runs. But man, I, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with Legato. And uh, I'll just have to cop it again. I mean, I won't have 600000 on or a $2 million multi riding on it this, uh, this Saturday, so it won't be as nervy of a watch. But... I've chucked it into a, a multi here and there and willing to, to give it another crack. But I really like your thinking around Campionessa. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very good bet. And again, that's a, in those first six races. So if you do like something outside of Legato and you back it to win, you're going to be getting a bonus back back to fourth. So you're effectively getting, for Campionessa, $2 to run top four up to $50. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to, well, as a bonus bet, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's uh it's a pretty good uh good saver there. All right, so you're going Campionessa, I'm gonna go Legato, then Campionessa. I'm gonna I'm gonna price up that uh fix odds Quinella when that comes out. Maybe even the exactor. Mm. Which way around. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh let's move on to the race number eight on the card at Tadapa meeting two, race number eight, the B C D group sprint group one level. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Sheep is creepers. This market is uh, very, very interesting. We've got the unbeaten horse, Crocchetti, looking to go eight in a row. Can someone let us know who did eight in a row? Uh, but you're getting $2.30 if you like this horse. You've got Barrier 2, Warren Kennedy, sticks with the ship, especially getting off Wytak, but obviously, you know, you get Opie on, so, you know, is same, same, maybe? Don't know, but... Um, four dollars fifty around Wytak, but you'd be pretty stoked if you are a Cricketty fan to be getting two dollars thirty. Are the chips going on, Mister Rackman? Uh, not for me, no. Too short. 
Um, I just um, <clears throat> I just think there's some value in this race that I'm that I'm willing to take a, a punt against Crickety. Habana. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not quite Habana. Oh, damn it. I've I've just gone off Habana a little bit. I did I didn't. I mean, I know I can forgive that last run, but um, coming back to the fourteen hundred, I just yeah. I don't. That seems a little bit funny to me. Um, I thought his best work and, and his best runs have been over the sixteen hundred. Um, no, but for me, um, <clears throat> I'm going to give Dragon Leap a, f- a forgive for its last start, and I can't let it run around at ten dollars and two dollars twenty for top four. Um, I, I just think it's due a little bit of luck. Um, if it, if it get if you know if all the um, you know all the the stars align and it gets a decent run and gets in a good spot and there's a bit of pace in this race as well. Um, you know, like if they're um, if they if they can run along in front a bit with you know horse like Corksign Mav and Crichetti, um, Bonnie Lass potentially, and then maybe a few a few of these other ones maybe wanting to get up on the speed and get going. Um, I, I, I'm just happy to take the ten dollars and two dollars twenty for Dragon Leap. <laughs> Excuse me. The other one that I'm not willing to uh, write off, and it might be a little bit forgotten here. <clears throat> Quintessa, last start, Group One winner. Right down on the weights, fifty three and a half, seven bucks, and a dollar eighty for top four as well, um, is maybe worth a little bit of a look. But no, for me, Dragon Leap, I can't let it run around at ten dollars and two twenty. I'm gonna have a bet on that. Yeah, Quintessa, we've spoken about her so many times, right? We're like, I'm sure, she's an outstanding horse. We finally get off and it wins the Group One <laughs> decades. This horse is six from six to run in the, in the top two, so it's it's never it's never been further back than second. That's that's unreal. And I think you're getting two dollars something to run top four, oh dollar eighty, so maybe a little bit shorter than that. But yeah, there's um, our mate Farrellione's in this race as well. I remember after Karak Millions evening, getting a little bit of like, oh, we're gonna go to the BCD Sprint or something. I'm like, right, I'm getting on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think, hang on, I think Crickety's in that race. I'm like, oh, I'm just still getting on. <laughs> um, and what about? The, I mean. Bonnie Lass, been so unlucky. But what about this horse on Saturday? If in doubt, get out. Do you see this? Yes. Yeah. It's is $15 into $2.60. Now, where's the heads up on that? Where's someone letting us know, hey, you might, you might want to have a play on this. But it won by 10 lengths or something stupid at New Plymouth. Again, I was just flicking the race on late to look for something. I'm like, what the hell is this thing just bolting out? And just, just killed them. But... They're backing that up, and that's at $31, and that's from Barrier 12. So this will be a lot trickier than going around trying to beat up uh, Ladies Man and Seamus, if my memory serves me correctly. But look, I'm uh, I'm not going to give up on Habana, mate. I'm going to have something, I think, I would have liked something a little bit more than $3.30 for top four. But hey, I would, I'd be gutted to see Habana get home. And, and not yeah, have anything on it. Yeah, exactly. Imagine it. But yeah, that's a big ass coming back. Uh, but, you know, onto a group track. A good track, sorry, and yeah, three from five at the distance, willing to have a little nibble. So, which way am I going to play it? Uh, I'm going to put Crickety on top, and maybe Quintessa as a top uh, top four dollar eighty too short. Maybe I'll Quinella those two, the two boom horses. See how good they really are. Leave out Whitec. That was just that was just too freakish for me on New Year's Day. Willing yeah. to, I'm willing to risk. And that, that track, again, like it, it just, I, I feel like there was like a, a fast lane in the middle of that track. And, you know, other parts of the track, horses seem to struggle. And, yeah, I'm willing to forgive some of the other horses' performances on that day. So, it, I mean, it was pretty freakish, eh? Like the way it came Spearing. through and boom through the middle. But um, $4.50 just seems, you know, I don't know. Seems too short. But. Well, Matt Daddy isn't with us tonight, but he has left us with a couple of his thoughts. He likes in the Herbie Dyke Arby top four, uh, in the Carapetal Classic. Is it Cinnamon each way? He liked, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It's twenty six is when it opened. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and it was into eight fifty. Jeepers! And then Todoronga on Sunday, race five, Trump card. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, if you're looking for something to back, what about producer Adam? You got anything from the comments over there, mate? Uh, yeah, we've got a couple of comments here about the uh, the punts or, you know, some really big wins. We have Stephen in here who's talking about uh, Robbie Hammond rode Yin Dragon with Lisa Ladder on it um, and at one pain $81 and he had a bit on that. So wow. uh, he said it was a good sword and shouted the bar all night for that, which is only fair enough. 
Uh, we have another one here from Ethan saying about how he cashed in on the Wizard of Woz on New Year's Day, I think it was as well. Yeah. And got a pretty nice return off that, which I think a few people did, if I remember correctly. That's right. Um, there's a few others, but there is a question here. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is going to come up in your best bets or anything later on, but uh, Buddy's asking, you know, from what you're just saying as well, what are your thoughts on the Tabs power play of Legato into Crescetti? Yeah, well done. Yeah, at four dollars seventy five. Is that is this coming up later? If I jump the gun here, no, or no, is, or is this good. good value here? Great question. We'll let Dan take this one. Well, I mean, the, the, the tab, <laughs> he doesn't like either. The tab, of them. the tab wouldn't give us two dollars fifty on. Uh, was it two dollars fifty? We were asking. We want for a threes, yeah. or three dollars or something. Yeah, on KM night. Now they're giving us four seventy five. Yeah, um, and they got plenty to play with too. The dogs. Yeah, they not, lost a bit on Jimmy Star right here. <laughs> not for me. Um, yeah, I, I mean, look, there's every chance they could both just come out and blouse them and win, and then that's going to be good money. But um, yeah, I, I I can see what at least one of them getting beaten um, this weekend. Here's a few bets from last weekend on the BGP Bliss bet. We'll carry on with that. $1,800 at $1.95, 1100 at twos, 1000 at two forty, two dollars twenty, $2.20, and $1.90, and $1.80, and $1.70. <laughs> Plenty on. Bloody good to see. Um, yeah, 574 bets on the Bliss bet last weekend. Well, wow. Yeah. How good. Good little nudge. But, yeah, I mean, I thought it was... Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty good price. If you like both of them, then that's going to keep you pretty interested for the day, isn't it? Crocchetti Legato four dollars seventy five. But gee whiz, is there an easy way to find four dollars seventy five? Habana top three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. Look, yeah. if yeah, if I'd, you like them, yeah, if you like them, just have a pump because that's good value, and they could very well like Crocchetti could just be awesome, and he could just come out and smash them, and then Legato could just get a nice run, get out, and then just beat them up as well. You know, they both could just come out and beat them up, and then yeah. you're looking back and you're going, oh, wow, that was easy money. Yeah. Um, I hope we just, yeah, I hope we see some real good, clean racing on Saturday. I, I do, I'm picturing it. I do think we're going to see Legato booming home, just getting over the top of Campionessa. Yeah. What's that exactor? <laughs> right. Any, uh, I'll just read through a couple of other best bets from the Facebook page, because there were a few coming through before. It looks like people are itching uh, to get on the punt. We've got Michael Minty, Matt Totari, Phil Bungard, Box Quinelli, Quinella in the Tairi Classic. Is that a golf tournament or something? Uh, Rachel says Skyman top four. Uh, Scott Murray says Mazzucato in race three at Wanganui. Freeze frame in race seven at Tauranga. That must be tomorrow and then on Sunday, I believe. Cameron Mackey, Legato, Waitak Multi. Casey, Molly Bloom, race four at Tarapa. Skyman for Courtney. Arby by five by Xavier, uh, Jerry O'Sullivan, Molly into Adam I Am. We haven't even touched on Adam I Am, have we? Mm-hmm. $2. Uh, Tarapa for Jordan Wise, race number seven, Quinella, Adam I Am to catch a thief. Oof. Jeepers. Jeff Calder, inspired by art, race four, Tarapa, $8.50, good money. Stephen Barlow, financier, last race at Tarapa. Um, I, I was digging through all the different futures and everything that was going on over the... Um what's going to be coming on over the, the next couple of months. And I think I found something that's at a little bit of value and, and it's probably got a little bit of work to do to get into this race. But there's a harness horse called Merlin. Oh, um, that's from Wizard of Oz, mate. Is it? <laughs> oh, Lord I, of the Rings. Is it? All right, <laughs> no, I don't no. know. Um, Ted told me off last time. It's not from that. It's from something. I can't, maybe it is. Oh, I can't remember. Okay, something. Sorry. <laughs> Ted, Ted will tell us in the comments. Yeah. Um, but this horse was really impressive in its last three starts and particularly down in cup week it won really well and it beat don't stop dreaming don't stop dreaming to just come out over in australia and run second in um uh, in like a big group one race over there in, in melbourne last week and run second to leap to fame it was a huge run um but for the miracle mile currently uh don't stop dreaming's at three dollars fifty and merlin's at nine dollars M- merlin gets a better draw and it, it's proven, in particular, it's last year, so it just beats beats up other horses. Um, and so I just thought, like, $9 seems to be over. A, a, from what I've heard, this horse is going to Australia, and um, it, it's going to need to win races to get into the Miracle Watt Mile. So, like, it might have to win the Chariots of Fire or something else or a qualifying race. But I just I can't see why Don't Stop Dreaming is $3.50 and Merlin is $9 after, um, you know, Merlin's beaten it up the last couple of times. Yes, it's had better draws, but that's all you need. Um, Brilliant $9 futures beer For the people out there How Miracle, do they find that what, what It's in the, the Miracle Mile In the Miracle Mile Yeah 
So it's just the international harness futures. Well, Merlin and the Miracle Mile, it's got a ring to it. Yeah. $9. Let's turn to the best bets this weekend, mate. There's a number of these to go through. So I'll start, then you can go, and then I'll go, then you can go, then I'll go. We'll go like that, eh? Okay. Sounds okay. Good. So Ted's kicking off first. He says there's a few shorties going around on Saturday at the races as well. So I'm going to make it up a race for Sabina, my best bet at each way odds of $5 and $2. Good win in the Desert Gold Stakes, and I think she will cop the 2,000 metres on Saturday. From the ace draw, hopefully she will get a nice soft run and then pounce in the run home. How good. The GOAT's best bet this week is Tarapa, race nine, number four, financier. Good-looking son of Tavistock, <clears throat> really hitting his straps now after a dominant win at Matter Matter. Logate will help and has to be uh, and has the class to prevail in this. Punt IQ going across the ditch. Caulfield meeting twelve race number eight. The good horse Aspura. She's back, baby. Speed Demon, who is five from seven at the distance and four from five at the course, wins more than one race every two starts, and you're getting over two dollars. That's value. Get on. Get plenty. Betty Boy's best bet. He's getting married next week, so he needs this to pay for it. Rickerton meeting six, race seven, Milfiore. Now, you better do your one, mate. I didn't work this out well, did I? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm, I've gone to Tarapa, meeting two, race three, say moi. Um, I think uh, loosely translated to English is, it's me. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> I've really liked the way this horse has uh, gone. Um, it, particularly in its last trial, uh, it was a pretty good-looking trial, and it was just held under a, under a hole, and they had just a lap full of horse, and it looked like a horse that was ready to go. Um, it's done well over 1,200 metres. I think it's won two starts um, at the distance from five, um, five starts, um, and I think it's going to cop a good track. It's had one start for one win on a good track, and fresh up, uh, it's two from two. Bloody beautiful. So $9 and $2.80 for top four. Get some of that. And use some of that to get on Scanman's best bet on Sunday. Methvin, race, a uh, meeting eight, race number one. He's that eager that the odds aren't even out yet. Ocean Breeze, apparently. He's like, go and watch this trial. I'm like, fuck, i got a bit on, mate. I'm not sure <laughs> if I'm going to watch the trial. I'm going to take your word for it, though. So Ocean Breeze on Sunday, meeting eight, race one at Methvin. How good. Fitzy's best bet. Uh, value each way, Addington race six on Friday night, the group one mayor's race. Life's a beach, draws barrier one, has some speed outside it and a couple of the favourites. So if it can punch out quick from the one and hold a trailing spot behind them and they run along at a decent tempo uh, and they hold up in front and give it a chance, it's value at $16 and four eighty. Even $3 top four could be a nice bet. This this she's a good mare. She's really fast. Um, yeah, she can boom home. So if the if the pace is on and she's in a good mood, um, yeah, she can she can run over the top of them for sure. Betsy with the sixteen dollar best bet. What a sicko! I'm going to go down south as I often like to do. Meeting six, race number six, a horse called Superbly Written. Now it's going to need to be ridden superbly on Saturday because it is drawn out. But we're getting about three dollars sixty to find out. It was second last start. And I think the jockey lost the irons as well over the concluding stages where it was just beaten. This is a very, very well-bred horse. It's performed in the North Island. It's gone down south. We're getting $3.60. So that's meeting six, race number six, superbly written. And then Matt Daddy. <clears throat> He's gone to Tarapa, meeting two, race five, Mark Twain, which is all also... Top, is it top three is uh, the blessed bet? That's right. Um, so it looks like a very good stayer. Targeted at the Auckland Cup. Ran fourth in the derby last season. Two links off Sharp and Smart, who was at the top of his game at that time. Thought enough of it to take it to the Aussie derby, uh, but had to sit three wide and didn't really get a good run over there. Um, looks ready to roll. Um, third up over 2,100 here, and he's one from one at Tarapa. Um he he was a real good. He he went into the derby last year on his third start or something, eh? Um, and had a bit of, bit of hype around him. Yeah, well, this horse was tipped to me to win the Auckland Cup, and I think we've mentioned that on the pod previously. So, uh, I I've had a little go at that, but you're only getting ten dollars, and I think it's still ten dollars. Let's just have a mm -hmm. quick look. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're only getting ten bucks. So, hey, might not get you too excited, but a little futures bet there. Well, mate, a number of best bets for the people there. 
as always, mate, it's not a best bet, but I've always got something sick to keep your eye on. And you might remember a little while ago, a horse called Jewel the Patch. Yep. Yeah. Goes around again this weekend. So what we need to do is we just need to have a quick search of the Christchurch weather because this horse can only perform well on a good track. And that's what we're going to need to back it on. Now, the Met Service tells us, oh, it's slow to load, lift it. What race are we? Uh, race number eight at Rickerton, I believe. Yeah, race number eight. So we're getting a, what's the weather like down there? Fuck, why is this, this is so hard to read? Where's the sun symbols? It's a soft track weather overcast from what I can see here. Niggly. Okay, next 48 hours. What about the next seven days? Surely it's going to be drying out. Oh, why do they make this so hard? Right, just search Christchurch weather for me, mate, and find out how we're looking. Here we go. Oh, it's not popping up. Oh, yes, here we go. Okay. Oh, damn it. Friday, rain, cloudy, Saturday. light rain. Well, that probably goes that plan. But anyway, uh, I was going to tip for one to watch, Jewel of Patch from Barrier Number 6. Now, it's a pretty decent field. It's paying $26, uh, as it likes to do. It's got to beat Mystic Park, but it usually rolls to the front. Can it hold on? It was a good four for a couple of starts ago, but anything... Um, worse than a good track and they'll probably be scratching you probably don't need to be backing that but I've had a little something on mate see how we go what's on this weekend uh, not a huge weekend this weekend mate um, <clears throat> bit of admin with the uh, with the kids and um, just go and spend a bit of time and hang out with them um, yeah. and then yeah mum's birthday on Sunday so I think all the her, her and um, my, my missus and, and all of their friends are there going up for a bottomless brunch so I'm going to be oh Dropping them off and picking them up, so that'd be fun. Nice. Yeah. You didn't get the invite to that. <clears throat> no, no, no. It's girls only. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see, you didn't get the invite. No, no. <laughs> Would have been concerned if you did then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will enjoy that, mates. I'll be, uh, yeah, quiet one watching all of these good races on Saturday. Wherever you're tuning into the punt on Saturday, we wish you good luck. Look after yourselves. Gamble responsibly. I won't be here next week because I'll be at Ben's wedding. So congratulations to Ben and Tash. Hopefully that all goes well next weekend. If I'm not here the following Thursday, we'll know that things really went tits up. Uh, but hopefully Matt Daddy is back in the studio with the rack man here. Adam making it all happen behind the scenes. Cheers for tuning in. We'll spot you next Thursday. Good luck this weekend. Game, set and match. I'll shut the gate. They're going to do it again. The Kanaka Million goes with and stays with. Del Zayo, long run, but here's the calls now. He's coming, he's gonna get there.